Welcome to Across Africa, our weekly look at stories from across the continent. I'm Georgia Calvin-Smith, and this week, US-led sanctions imposed on Zimbabwe two decades ago have had far-reaching economic effects. Penalties intended to target the elite have been strangling businesses at all levels of society. Some are calling for a change. Also, it's a major step for the fight against the pandemic in Africa. South Africa has opened a new vaccine plant, the first on the continent to cover the entire process from start to finish. And Kurt Rajme heads to Senegal. The French filmmaking collectives opened a school in the country, co-founded by the award-winning director of the 2019 film Les Miserables. The institution hopes to help students go from dreams to the screen. But first, Zimbabwe has been the target of US and EU sanctions for 20 years now. The economic measures were imposed when late President Robert Mugabe was in place. Today, the UN says the penalties aren't just affecting the powerful. The whole country is being crippled by the consequences, including the most vulnerable. Some are saying it's time for a new approach. It's called the Zimbabwe Democracy and Economic Recovery Act, yet it lists a series of sanctions which have crippled Zimbabwe's economy for now 20 years. The U.S. bill has made it almost impossible to do business. This factory produced 20,000 refrigerators annually before the sanctions. Last year, it made only 1,000 of them. We used to employ over 350, 350 employees here. We are now down to less than 50 employees. Just that tells you what sanctions are. International banks no longer lend money to Zimbabwe companies. Investors have deserted the country. The IMF has excluded Zimbabwe from its funding programs too. The U.S. and then the EU voted the sanctions after contested elections reports on human rights abuses, and to force Zimbabwe to pay compensations to white land owners evicted from their properties. Instead of hitting policymakers, a UN report shows it's the general population who is struggling. We don't want conditions to be given to the government or the people of Zimbabwe to say do this or that will remove sanctions. Some U.S. officials say Zimbabwe's economic crisis has worsened not because of the sanctions, but due to bad management. The U.N. Special Rapporteur on Coercive Measures disagrees. She has called to lift sanctions as soon as possible. In Congo, Brazzaville, a viral video shot earlier this month has reignited concern over police violence. It shows police officers beating three detainees with hammers, in broad daylight. Two of the young men later died of their wounds. The victims' families and rights groups say abuse by police is systemic and widespread and have called for a crackdown. A warning, some viewers may find images in the following report disturbing. This video, which has circulated widely on social media, shows three detainees being tortured by police officers in broad daylight under an overpass in Brazzaville. One by one, their legs are beaten with hammers only one survived and is still in hospital. His uncle is in shock. The police raided their house. It was between two and three in the morning. They took them and brought them to the station. They didn't tell them what for. And it was later that day that we were told that the boy was in the hospital with broken ankles. This is not the first time Congolese police have been accused of torture and abuse. In November, six people were found dead in Brazzaville's central police station. For this human rights activist, more needs to be done to address what he says is a systemic problem. What is filmed is really just a small percentage of what happens. There are probably even worse things that we're not aware of. These images are atrocious and unjustifiable. We do what we can to defend our rights. But at the end of the day, there must be sanctions and there must be a clear political vision. Those responsible for these atrocities must be sanctioned or removed from their posts. Meanwhile, the government has condemned the recent incidents and promised to take adequate measures. We are completely sorry to see this type of video circulating and to learn that these acts were committed by agents who are responsible for ensuring public order. These are isolated acts carried out by criminals, even if they are police officers. They've been arrested and brought before the public prosecutor and there will be sanctions taken against them. 
The families of the three young men have said they will press charges, hoping that justice will be served. South Africa's presidents opened the continent's first end-to-end -end vaccine manufacturing plant. The facility in Cape Town is a partnership between a U.S. biotech firm, the government and South African universities. President Cyril Ramaphosa said that it's a key step in tackling the global disparities in access to vaccines. Wasim Korni has more. A milestone in South Africa's fight against COVID-19. President Cyril Ramaphosa and businessman Patrick Soon Xiong have opened a new vaccine plant in Cape Town. It's the first in the continent that will house the entire vaccine-making process from start to finish. The South African-born American billionaire wants to transfer technology and materials from his Californian company to scientists in South Africa, turning the country into a major hub for medical technology. So the idea is these are the kinds of 21st century technologies that as we implement manufacturing in South Africa by South Africans for South Africans and be leapfrog for the rest of the world. It's no secret the level of vaccination in Africa is less than satisfactory. Just 10 percent of the continent's population has been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. This plant should help turn that trend around. Africa should no longer be the last in line to access vaccines against pandemics. We will stand on our own. This we are determined to do, and this facility is proof of that. The plant is expected to be able to produce 1 billion vaccine doses annually by 2025. The factory won't only be used to produce COVID-19 vaccines, though. The goal is to provide future medication for the entire continent. An outbreak of bird flu in Burkina Faso has led to the culling of almost half a million chickens and the destruction of 1.3 million eggs since the end of December. It's a huge blow to the poultry industries, which represents about 6% of GDP. Our team reports. Bibato arrives at work at 6 a.m. every day. Before she heads to university, the economics student starts her day at her poultry farm. She started the Passion Project in 2019 and now has around 500 chickens. But since avian flu struck the country's poultry industry, customers have been staying away. Bibata is worried. So far there have been no deaths in my chicken coop. Before I could sell 40 chickens a week, but since the announcement I can't even sell two chickens a week. It's impossible. I'm worried because I have chickens that I have to sell. I have to sell them. I'm here feeding them and I'm losing money. It's a loss for me. Morris sells grilled chicken. He's also noticed an unusual lull in customers since the beginning of the year. At our level in Ouagadougou, we have not seen any poultry contaminated by bird flu. But since the minister spoke of the outbreak of the disease, we no longer make any revenue. But in my farm in the countryside, more than 1,000 chickens have died since December. The government has said it will do its best to help traders. For bird flu to kill a person, they would have to live for a long time with sick birds. For those who have lost their jobs, the state will find ways to be able to either alleviate their loans or improve the mechanisms of importing raw materials to be able to raise their poultry. Welcome support for a country where chicken is big business. In 2021, the Burkina Bay authorities announced plans to launch a label for its local free-range chicken breed known as Bicycle Chicken to increase its added value and compete against imported poultry. A French filmmaking collective opened its first school in Africa. The Court Rajmi institutions set up in Senegal to help train would-be directors turn their creative visions into reality. Award-winning director Lange Lee, the director of the 2019 film Les Miserables, was at the project's launch and says he's keen for the continent's young people to have more avenues into the industry. Laurent Berstecker has the story. A highly anticipated inauguration that's been years in the making. The Dakar Courtrajmé Film School welcomed its first students on Wednesday in the presence of award-winning filmmaker Laj Lee. The director of Les Miserables and member of the Courtrajmé Collective spoke of the many hurdles he had to overcome 
for the project to come to fruition. It's quand même le, le parcours du combattant de se dire qu'on veut créer des écoles gratuites, ouvertes à tous. C'est vrai que ce n'est pas évident. On, sincèrement, on pensait que ce serait un peu plus facile et qu'on trouverait plus facilement des, des, des fonds. For its first student intake, the school selected a dozen young Senegalese scriptwriters from hundreds of applicants. They will be joined by another 18 aspiring directors in June. Together, they'll have to write and produce two short films and a TV series pilot by the end of their studies. An approach that focuses on practical learning and on working as a group. Une richesse de groupe, c'est-à-dire, euh, puisqu'on est dans la coécriture, on aura des textes euh, euh, divers et parfois osés. J'espère avoir cette famille euh, qu'on composera avec les autres scénaristes à la fin de cette formation, qu'on puisse toujours rester soudés et compter l'un sur l'autre pour euh, des projets futurs. After launching three similar institutions in France in recent years, the Dakar Film School is Courtrajmé's first in Africa. The French collective, known for its work with actors such as Vincent Cassel, hopes to open a dozen more schools across the continent in the near future. Well, that's it for Across Africa for now. Thanks for joining us and do so again if you can. Till then, take care.